Microsoft recently announced the new Power BI content pack for Microsoft PPM. This content pack allows organizations to deploy out-of-the-box reporting in a new Project Web App instance, so not requiring any customizations whatsoever. You can, of course, deploy it in a fully configured environment also. There are three areas of focus, portfolios, resources, and projects. At the bottom, you'll see the available report pages. The first six pages focus on portfolio reporting, that is, reporting across all the projects in the portfolio. The next five pages focus on resource reporting, such as availability, assignments, and all the resources in the organization. And the last two pages focus on the detailed status and risks and issues for one project at a time. Across the top, we have filters for the portfolio reports. These allow you to filter the page by department, project type, project owner, and governance phase. For example, if I want to look at just the projects that are currently in the execution phase, I can filter accordingly. Or I can look at projects that are agile, infrastructure, programs, software development, and so on. As you can see, the details on the page filter accordingly. Along the left-hand side, I have a project count, summary of the cost, cost variance, work and work variance, and count of the active risks and issues for the projects we're currently looking at. I can also single out an individual project, for example, the AA Tenant Renewal Project, and I can see the owner, start date, finish date, cost, and some key performance indicators. These KPIs have been built in Power BI, where green means up to 10% variance, yellow means 10 to 20%, and red means more than 20%. But that, of course, is something that you can change in your organization. With this project selected, I can see its key data on the left-hand side of the page. If I want even more detailed information, I can follow the link icon, which opens the SharePoint collaboration site. Here, I can see a project summary that rotates between the timeline and the late and upcoming tasks. As well, this page provides access to the project's action items, project status narrative, risks and issues, and whatever else you might have defined in your organization. Going back to the Power BI reports, the next page is the portfolio timeline. This gives me a nice visual of when projects are scheduled. And you can, of course, zoom, for example, to look at projects that start from January 2017 onwards. On the portfolio costs page, I can see a summary of all the costs across the portfolio. The upper right-hand corner highlights what my actual costs to date are, 19 million, compared against the baseline of 26 million and the updated forecast of 28 million. Now, let's look at just the engineering projects. If I filter for that department, I see just the projects within engineering, and the table shows me which ones are red, yellow, green, or not baseline. This table has drill down and expand enabled, so I can right click and expand to the next level, which now shows me where the costs are coming from. In this case, labor, software, hardware, training, and travel. It's sorted to show the greatest variance first to make it easy to detect problem areas. The Portfolio Milestones report shows me everything we've completed in the past 30 days and what's coming up in the next 30 days. If I select Brett Prince, we'll see all of the milestones from his projects. The link icon on this page takes us to the detailed schedule where we can see the timeline, work breakdown structure, and the Gantt chart. The Portfolio Risks page summarizes all the risks across the portfolio. Here, I could choose to filter to just see those that have been tagged for management escalation, and the link here will take us to the detailed risk on the project site 
where we can edit and update it directly. Similarly, we have the Issues Report page that summarizes the issues across the portfolio. I'm going to select Brett Prince so that we can see all the issues that Brett has on his projects. If he's sitting down with his vendor and wants to see any issues that pertain to that vendor, he can simply filter for that category. Next, we'll move into the resource reports. The first one is resource availability, which allows us to see where we have remaining availability and where we have over allocations for our team members. I'm going to use my database team in this example, so I filter on the group database team. Now we see the details for Mike, Stephen, James, Mark, Daryl, and Sean, and I can see where we have remaining availability as a team and which months were over allocated. I can also select an individual. Mike DeFelice, and the visualizations on top will show me his capacity with a yellow line, and then I can see what the overall assignment level is for Mike within the team. On the right-hand side, you can see a very similar visualization that goes negative when I have over allocations. Now, if I want to dive a little deeper into Mike's situation, I go to the resource details report. This page provides a summary of everything we know about Mike. He uses the standard calendar and is part of the database team in the IT department. I can see his availability picture for the entire year. I can see some current year assignment metrics. So, for example, he has 90 assignments on five different projects, 3,600 hours of work, of which almost 2,800 are complete, and so on. The visualizations on the bottom adds the element of the projects Mike is working on. It looks like the Genwell project is consuming a lot of Mike's time. In fact, over 2,200 hours, or 61%. So, if I select just that project in the donut chart, I see that this project alone is over-allocating Mike every month. So I probably need to have a conversation with the project manager. I can also select a combination of projects, to see if I can do all of these without overallocating Mike. The Resource Overview page allows us to get more insights into the enterprise resource pool, such as who we have on the Quality Assurance team, the Finance team, or in the PMO. I also have access to the detailed resource assignments. So if I want to know what Albert is working on, I select him and see that he's currently assigned to these nine projects. Now I'm going to sort this by percent work complete because that way I see the incomplete projects at the top. I can see that he is assigned to three active projects. If I focus on the data warehouse inventory project, I can drill down and see all the detailed tasks that Albert has been assigned to, including the time frame percent work complete, and the work estimates. I can see that Albert has two tasks still open, conducting the post-project review meeting and finalizing the project closure report. The last report for the resources is the resource demand forecast report. This uses predictive analytics and takes your historical data and forecast what we think the future is going to look like. For these months here, we can see the demand data in the system up until March of 2018. Beyond this point, we have the calculated forecast from the predictive analytics engine to estimate what we think the demand is going to be in the future. Next, let's look at the project reports. The project status report summarizes the key information for a single project. You will see at the top, I have my KPIs, the project manager, status date, project type, key dates, description, and so on. On the left-hand side, I can see that this project is 35 days late, which is still within our 10% tolerance, so it's green. And I also see work variance, cost variance, 
total project cost, work, as well as count of active issues and risks. In the middle section, I get an overview of work and cost over time, actual, scheduled, and baseline. In the tables below, I have access to the completed milestones as well as all the upcoming milestones. In the bottom right-hand corner, I see my percent complete as well as links to the project site and the project schedule. And then we have the supporting risks and issues page. This allows me to identify all the active risks and issues and then quickly see who was assigned or possibly spot some risks that have a high impact and high probability, as this is probably where I want to focus my attention. Similarly, I can look at the high priority issues and see which ones are assigned to Mark, Kenneth, and Steve, and so on. This Power BI content pack provides a lot of great functionality right out of the box, but it is, of course, intended for you to tailor to your deployment of Microsoft PPM. So you might choose to use the sponsor field for a project filter or role for resource filter and so on. This exports really nicely to PowerPoint. So if you come up here, you can export this entire set of reports to a PowerPoint presentation. Here it is. I now have some very nice visuals that I can use in my status meetings and reports. Because this is Power BI, you also have the native apps on iPads and Android devices and phones, so you have a very good experience on your mobile devices as well. If you want to learn more about this Power BI content pack or any other Microsoft PPM services, please don't hesitate to reach out to us, and we will be happy to engage with you and help you to be successful with Microsoft PPM. The new bookmark feature in Power BI works exceptionally well with this content pack. For example, you may want to prepare a walkthrough with status on key projects, programs, and resources. As such, you would save bookmarks and then walk your audience through the story you want to tell about your data. It's almost like running a PowerPoint presentation where you click through the various report pages and details that you've already pre-filtered and highlighted.